Hey guys, first and foremost, sorry for any weird unnecessary noise in the background today. There is a road crew outside and they did not approve my request for quiet. So today's chat is gonna be all about the combine. To start, let me just say that I totally agree with Bruce Arians. Arians said, you might run a 4-3, but your tape shows a 4-6. You might run a 4-6, but your tape shows a 4-4. The tape doesn't lie, the combine lies. You can fall in love at the combine and get your ass broke. And to that extent, I agree. I think the tape shows exactly what you need to see and is definitely a better judge of ability than any athletic testing at the combine. I'm in 85% tape, 15% combine girl. But still, let's talk about what we saw. I know the first person on everybody's mind is Chase Young and we all know that he chose to not compete in the combine. Personally, I'm totally fine with his decision. As far as I'm concerned, he has completely solidified his ability and his chances at being a top five draft pick. There's no need for him to show out at the combine and risk any type of injury or any off stats that really don't show how he actually plays on the field. And like I said a moment ago, the tape doesn't lie. His tape looks pretty darn good. But now let's take a look at some of the other draft prospects I previously covered in one of my videos. This video to be specific. How about Derek Brown? I saw many fans that seemed turned off by his performance in the agility testing. But with all that to be said, as far as his measurables go that the Lions will be concerned with, he still fared pretty well. He's a great height and weight combo for the position, has the arm length that the Lions look for in alignment, a terrific 10 yard split time at 1.76 seconds for a big boy sitting at 326 pounds, an above league average bench press, although this is a low priority, and a broad jump that hits just above the mark that Patricia likes. And despite many being concerned over his three cone time, in my opinion, it's really not that important for the position that he'd be playing. When do you really expect your inside defensive lineman to be changing direction at his top speed? This measurable is much more applicable to secondary defensive players such as corners. It's important to note that of all the inside defensive linemen tested, none of them crossed off all four benchmarks for the Lions but Brown crossed off three of four. On to Jeff Akuda, who did not disappoint. At 6'1 and 205 pounds, Akuda put up a 4'48 40-yard dash, a 40 and a half vertical, and an 11 and a quarter broad jump. We also got to see some pretty impressive footage of Akuda backpedaling while taking his hips from side to side as if they were on some sort of greased hinge. I really only want to imagine a scenario where Akuda is playing opposite of Slay. Not to mention, Akuda said it would be a dream to play opposite Slay, and he looks up to him. So if he is their choice, I really hope to see an extension coming down the line for Slay any minute now. Akuda also fits the stats that Quinn and Patricia tend to like, with stats very comparable to those of their pick from last year, Amani Aruarie, including running the exact same 40 time, the exact same height and weight, with a better broad jump and a better vertical. Not only did I like what I saw on the field, but I really appreciated Akuda's attitude during interviews. He seemed wise beyond his years and handled intimidating questions with grace. You could tell the kid did his research. He came prepared and it seemed as though he knew his prospective team's strategies. And now for my stud and my dud. My dud of the combine is defensive edge, AJ Ipaniza. The athletic testing seemed to show that Ipaniza was putting up defensive tackle-like results instead of elite edge rusher results. Running a 5.04 40 yard dash with a 1.78 second 10 yard split, you could say that Ipaniza came off as a little bit sluggish. But how much will these results really matter to different teams? Because on the other hand, the talk at the combine surrounding him seemed to be all positive especially from former players that he was up against on the field. And his tape definitely seems to tell a different story. And my stud, Isaiah Simmons. At 6'4", Isaiah recorded an 11-foot broad jump, a 39-inch vertical, and a 4.39 40-yard dash time. All of these stats qualified in the 92nd percentile or higher. I see a lot of major upside with this player. He seems like he could come onto the field and make an immediate impact, which is something the Lions so desperately need. But of course, the huge question here is where does he fit in the Lions' defensive scheme? 
Some people claim that a jack of all trades is a master of none. However, I think Isaiah may be a master of many. It's honestly more unfortunate that there's only one of him. I'm a proponent of either using him to bolster the weak linebacker core or as a linebacker safety hybrid similar to how they were using him at Clemson. I really like the fact that he can not only play at linebacker, but even at linebacker that he can drop back into coverage. So to wrap it up, my post combine thoughts, I'm still really looking for the Lions to trade down if Chase Young is not on the board at three. But how far we can trade down and still land Simmons or Akuda becomes my main concern. It should be interesting to see what Quinn and Patricia have in mind. And side note, I would not be surprised to see them take Brown with a third pick because Patricia prioritizes stopping the run so much. What do you guys think after watching the combine and does this affect who you want the Lions to take at three? Do you still want them to trade down? Share with me your thoughts on all of my social media. Facebook and YouTube, it's Rachel Marie Sports. Twitter, at Rach Marie Sports. And Instagram, at Rachel Marie Sports. One pride.